Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Warlords of Draenor Dungeon Guide. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the revamped version of Upper Blackrock Spire, which is now in control of the Iron Horde. If you'd like to skip to a specific boss in this dungeon, then please do use the annotations that are on screen now. Alternatively, if you'd like to view a written version of this guide, then head on over to flaskup.com or click on the link that's in the video description below. The first boss in this dungeon goes by the name of Orbendo Gorashan, and he's going to use a combination of thunder, electricity, and saw blades in order to try and bring down your party. Now what you'll notice is around the room that you fight him in, there are these little kind of conduits that you have to deactivate before you can actually start fighting the boss. And these are also going to play a part during this fight, which we're going to speak about in a bit. His first ability is called Electric Pulse, and this is a lightning orb that will travel between these power runes around the outside of the room and will inflict a moderate amount of nature damage every 0.8 seconds to anyone that is standing near them. It's worth noting that these do move around the room, and on the heroic mode version of this fight, you'll get two instead of just one. His next ability goes by the name of Blades of Steel, and this is where bringing saw blades into this fight to try and kill people comes into play. This ability will simply deal a high amount of physical damage to players, and it's something you've just got to heal through. Thankfully, because you're going to be standing in a kind of confined area, AoE healing will play a big part in this fight. His next ability is called Shrapnel Nova, and this will cause him to inflict between 70,000 and 80,000 physical damage to nearby enemies, and this will also ignore armor. Again, this is something else you're just going to have to heal through. His third ability is called Lodestone Spike, and this causes a magnetically charged spike to erupt from the earth, inflicting a high amount of nature damage to whoever it hits. You should be able to move away from this in time, but if you don't, it's just additional damage you're going to be taking. And now we're going to jump back to the power conduits that are around the room again, as his next ability is literally called Power Conduit. And this will cause the rune conduits that are around the room to channel power to Gorashan, reducing his damage taken by 14%, and also empowering him to cast an ability called Thunder Cacophony. And while he is empowered with the energy of the rune conduits, he will unleash lightning, which will inflict a small amount of nature damage to nearby enemies. Now, when the power conduits are active and channeling to Orbender Gorashan, you simply need to jump down from the platform you're on, go and right click on the conduit, and then that will deactivate it, and then go back to fighting the boss. It's quite simple, but it's also difficult at the same time when you've got the orbs of electricity moving around the room. It's also worth noting as the fight goes on, he will power up more and more conduits, so more players will have to jump down in order to deactivate them. The next boss in this dungeon goes by the name of Kyrak, and you'll probably notice this model to be a little bit similar to Meloriac back in the Blackwing Descent Raid back in Cataclysm. Now, there are three mobs you're going to have to deal with during this fight, one of them being Kyrak, and the other two being Draconid Monstrosities. Now, these monstrosities have got a frontal cleave ability, which will hit for a small amount of physical damage, and this is called Monstrous Swipe. Now, because of this, you obviously need to make sure they're facing away from the raid, and making sure that people aren't standing in front of them intentionally, otherwise they're going to take silly amounts of damage. And the next ability is called Eruption, and this will cause them to erupt flames in a line in front of them, inflicting a high amount of fire damage instantly, and disorienting enemies. Now, it will also inflict an additional small amount of fire damage every one second for three seconds if you do get hit by it, or if you happen to stand in it. Simply make sure that the monstrosities are facing away from the party when dealing this, and if possible try and point them towards a wall. Now because two of these spawn, you want to mark one with a skull or one with a cross, and you want to prioritize killing these off first before moving on to Kyrak. And once the monstrosities have been killed and you switch your focus to Kyrak, you're going to have four abilities to deal with. The first ability is called Debilitating Fixation, and this will cause him to fixate on a target and channel a beam of debilitating energy, which inflicts around 20,000 shadow damage every one second, and also decreases movement speed and damage dealt. This ability is interruptible and should be interrupted as soon as he begins to cast it. 
His next ability is called Rejuvenating Serum, and this will cause him to drink a potion, a la Maloriac, and heal 8% of his maximum health every 3 seconds for 12 seconds. This is a magic effect that he will place on himself, so you need to remove it with some form of magical removing ability such as spell steal in order to stop him from healing. His next ability is called Vile Blood Serum, and this will cause poison to erupt from his skin, creating puddles of poison which inflict nature damage every one and a half seconds on the ground. Now these will be targeted on players, so they will land underneath a player's location. So as soon as he begins to cast the Vile Blood Serum, you should move in order to avoid taking an initial tick of damage from the puddle when it lands under you. Once they have landed, standard do not stand in the bad stuff on the ground mechanics will apply. And on heroic mode, he's got an additional ability called Salve of Toxic Fumes. And this will simply cause him to cover a target in toxic poison, inflicting a moderate amount of nature damage every one and a half seconds to all nearby allies. Now because of this you want to try and stay spread out, and it is a poison effect, so if possible try and remove it. The third boss in this dungeon goes by the name of Commander Tharbek, and before you get to him, you're going to have to go through the process of defeating waves of trash, just like you did in the original Upper Blackrock Spire. It's still really really fun just like it was before, and I hope the sarcasm is coming across quite easily. Nevertheless, once you've defeated the three trash waves, you will then fight Commander Tharbek and his Iron Barb Skyreaver Mount. Now you want to start off by focusing down the Skyreaver Mount first, as this has got two abilities which can be quite a bee in your bonnet. The first ability is called Incinerating Breath, and this will cause him to breathe a cone of fire, inflicting a moderate amount of fire damage every one second, and also increase fire damage taken by 50%, and this is a stacking debuff. So simply make sure that your tank's got him facing away from the party and also using personal cooldowns if needed in order to negate the additional fire damage he'll be taking. And the Sky Reaver will also cast an ability called Noxious Spit which will create a puddle of acid inflicting a smallish amount of nature damage every one and a half seconds. Standard do not stand in the bad stuff on the ground mechanics apply here. Now, while you're killing off the Sky Reaver, you're also going to have to deal with Tharbek's abilities too, just you can focus on them more once the Sky Reaver is dead. Tharbek's first ability is called Iron Axe, and this will cause him to inflict a high amount of physical damage and cause the target to bleed for physical damage every one and a half seconds, and this will last for six seconds. Unfortunately, there's no way of negating this damage other than personal cooldowns or raid-wide cooldowns, so you simply need to heal through it. His next ability is called Iron Reaver, and this will cause him to charge a target, inflicting a high amount of physical damage to anyone in the way. Now, because of this, you want to try and stay as spread out as possible, which understandably might be hard while the Sky Reaver's up and creating puddles of acid on the ground, but try and stay as spread as you can, so that when he does cast Iron Reaver, he's only going to hit one person, and not multiple people at any one time. His next ability is called Imbued Iron Axe, and this will cause him to throw a Whirling Axe, inflicting a high amount of fire damage to anyone that is near it. The Imbued Iron Axes will persist for the entirety of the fight, and they're very obvious and very shiny, and you can see them with great ease, so simply move away from them as they move towards you. And his final ability goes by the name of Iron Rage, and this simply causes his damage inflicted to be increased by 50%, so your tanks will need to use personal cooldowns if needed, and players should do better at avoiding abilities if they feel like they've been getting hit by them. The fourth boss in this dungeon goes by the name of Ragewing, and he's basically a big dragon who is going to, excuse the pun, summon whelps. As always, we're going down the whelp avenue again with dragons and many whelps, etc. throughout the fight in order to try and bring your party down and stop you from getting to the final boss. Now, before we talk about Rage Wing, let's speak about the Whelps. And once Rage Wing has reached 70% health remaining, and I believe it was also 35 or 40% health remaining, he'll retreat and summon a wave of Whelps in order to attack your party. Simply get your tank to pick these up as fast as he can, group them up, and then AoE them down, as they don't really do anything worthwhile. They're just a pain in the backside and probably just a joke from Blizzard, so someone can make a many Whelps reference throughout this encounter. 
Now moving on to Rage Wing, he's got a set of abilities that you're going to have to deal with and it's primarily fire based because he is a dragon so do keep that in mind. And his first ability goes by the name of Burning Rage and this will just simply increase his damage dealt by 15% and this can stack up to 4 times. His next ability is called Engulfing Fire and this will cause him to breathe a cone of fire inflicting a high amount of fire damage and also disorienting enemies for 3 seconds. Now what you'll find with this is he'll breathe it from one end of the bridge to the other end of the bridge that you're fighting him on so he kind of moves in a semi-circle sort of manner so you can outrun this and you should outrun this in order to avoid the damage and the disorient. His next ability is a tank based debuff and this is called Ripping Claw and this will simply cause him to tear at the tank's flesh bleeding them for a small amount of damage every 2 seconds for 20 seconds. This is something you're going to have to simply heal through or use personal or raid cooldowns in order to negate the damage. His next ability is called Firestorm and this will cause him to spit fire inflicting a moderate amount of fire damage to people in the party. Unfortunately this is just damage you're going to have to heal through. And his final ability is called Magma Spit and this will cause him to spit magma at an enemy which inflicts a small amount of damage to start off with and also leaves a puddle of magma underneath that player. Standard do not stand in the fire mechanics do apply here as you will take high amounts of damage if you stand in the magma on the ground. It's also worth noting that once Rage Wing has flown away for the second time in this fight and joined the fight again you'll probably still have some whelps up but instead of standing next to the bridge and flying around like the dragon he is he will actually land on the bridge and you'll fight him in person where he isn't flying around. He doesn't do anything extra, it's just worth noting that if you're wondering why there's a big dragon in front of you, it's because he felt like landing on a bridge. And the final boss in this dungeon goes by the name of Warlord Zayla, and despite only having a few abilities herself, she's going to use the power of dragons, if that is a kind of power I guess, in order to try and bring your party down, and also make you move around a lot during this fight. Now before we actually get onto Zayla, we're going to talk about some mobs that are going to spawn called the Black Iron Worm Riders. And when Zayla has reached 60% health remaining, she's going to retreat onto the back of a nearby Proto Drake for a short while, and Worm Riders are going to dismount in order to attack the party. Once these spawn, you need to get your tank to pick them up as soon as possible, and then it's just easier to single target them off one at a time, or if you really feel like it, AoE them down and kill them off before Zayla lands again. You've got around 20 seconds to do this and they don't have that much health so it shouldn't be too much of an issue for you to pull off. Now once Zayla has flown away and come back at 60% health remaining you'll also start getting Ember Scale Iron Flight Dragons flying around the platform that you're fighting Zayla on. Now what these will do is they will position themselves at the center or the right or left hand side of one of the four sides of the square platform and they will then begin to channel an ability called Burning Breath. And this will cause them to breathe a wide line of fire, which inflicts a high amount of fire damage to players once they get hit by it. You simply need to move away from where the dragon is going to be breathing breath, and you've got, I believe, like five seconds to move away, so there should be plenty of time for you to see where the dragon's going to be, and then move away. Obviously, this does mean you're going to be running around quite a bit during the second part of this fight, so trying to stay grouped together where possible may be better for moving around together and also AoE healing purposes. And now moving on to Warlord Zayla, on normal mode she's only got two abilities you're going to have to deal with, and then on heroic mode she's got one additional ability. Her first ability is called Black Iron Cyclone, and this will cause Zayla to enter a combat frenzy and fixate on a random target, dealing a high amount of physical damage to anyone that's near her every one and a half seconds. Simply move away from her as she begins turning into a tornado for some reason and you won't take any damage and if she's fixated on you, you just need to run away from her and kite her around the platform. Her next ability is called Rebounding Blade and this will cause her to throw an axe inflicting a small amount of physical damage to the target and bouncing to hit up to two more nearby enemies. You want to try and stay spread out a little bit for this because I think it does bug from time to time and doesn't actually bounce but at the same time it's probably going to bounce anyway that's probably been fixed by now so staying stacked up would be good enough for the AoE healing purposes. 
And finally, on the heroic mode version of this fight, you're going to have to deal with one more ability called Destructive Smite. And this is going to inflict a very high amount of physical damage to the player it hits, and it will also knock them back. Now, because you're on a suspended platform, you need to be careful of where you're getting knocked back and making sure you're not too close to the sides, because there's a chance you could fall to a very lava-based death. So that's going to do it for this Warlords of Draenor Dungeon Guide. Hopefully it's going to help you get some loot and get you ready for raiding, and also 10 shiny achievement points. If you'd like to view a written version of this guide, then you can head on over to flaskup.com and hover over the little Dungeons tab at the top of the page, or click on the link that's in the video description below. Alternatively, if you'd like to keep up to date with all of our latest uploads, such as dungeon guides, our weekly news show, or raiding guides when the raids do become available, then please do feel free to subscribe to the channel. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.